I'm Ben Miller, a scientist who's researched in half a dozen academic labs. I interned at BU, Northwestern, and then went to Columbia and got my degree. I even spent a year teaching on a science bus. But I gave it all up to pursue stand-up comedy. And now, I'm combining my passions into stand-up science. Hello, class. Today we're discussing the question, is milk good for you? Now, milk has been a staple of American kitchens since the 1950s, and the Got Milk campaign has put the necessity of milk at the forefront of our minds for the past 25 years. You know, all sorts of celebrities have done the campaigns, like Taylor Swift. No, that's a country Taylor Swift pictured here, by the way. Not pop Taylor Swift, or as the coastal elites like to call her, soda Taylor Swift. Spike Lee has also done ads. Here he's dressed like a Depression-era blues musician. And he looks so upset to be there. It looks like he thought it was an ad for MLK, and he got there and he was like, Oh, milk. Okay. It looks like he got bamboozled. You know, but are all of these ads actually correct about the necessity of milk in our diets? Now, we'll get into that in a little bit, but first, I have a bit of a confession. I have sort of a personal connection to this topic. Because my parents, they used to make me have two glasses of milk every day until I was 18 years old. Yeah, which is how I grew up to be such a big, strong boy like this. <laughs> yeah, this is the best possible scenario, by the way. This is me when I'm fully fortified. <laughs> wow, I was so young and innocent back then. You know, the only facial hair I could grow was a milk mustache. They say that you have to spend 10,000 hours on something in order to become an expert. And I've had over 10,000 glasses of milk, which unfortunately makes me a bit of an expert. Now, every night my parents would make me have milk like they were hazing me for some sort of frat. Like, chug, chug, chug. Ah, oh, come on, you gotta keep it down if you want to make it in this house. But was this actually good for me? Now, the major claim about the necessity of milk is that it contains calcium, which is good for your bones. Now, we know what you're thinking. I don't need strong bones. You know, birds have hollow bones and they can fly, so maybe if I don't drink milk, I can soar into the heavens. But birds actually have denser bones than ours, and they use the spaces in their bones to store air, so until you can breathe through your bones, maybe quit your flapping. Bones are 40% calcium, and your body doesn't naturally produce it, so you need to consume calcium in order to achieve peak bone mass and density. After your 20s, you can no longer really gain bone mass, so you need to go to the gym in order to get those gains. So you do need to consume calcium daily, and milk can be a good source of that, but too much dairy actually might increase your risk of bone fracture. There's something that's known as the calcium paradox, which refers to the fact that countries that have the highest rate of dairy consumption also have the highest rates of osteoporosis and bone fracture. Now this could be explained by things like vitamin D consumption, lifestyle, diet, but further research is necessary. But it sort of reminds me of that old adage, you know, sticks and stones may break your bones, but so might too much milk. I also found one study that showed that dairy doesn't really have an effect on your appetite or weight but they found that people that consumed dairy products subjectively felt more full. Now, this false feeling of fullness afforded by dairy products has been dubbed by scientists as the placebovine effect. I'm sorry, that was a really stupid pun. That was just utterly moronic. So milk can be a good source of calcium, but there are also other options. You can have foods like oranges, kale, almonds, soy milk, collard greens, sweet potatoes, or even oregano. So yes, that tiny bag of leaves my parents found under my bed when I was just 14, I was just trying to increase my calcium consumption, I promise. No, I'm sorry, I've actually never smoked weed or even eaten in bed before. I was just trying to impress people on the internet. I'm sorry, I'll be better next time, I promise. You can also have cereal, which is often fortified with calcium, and just have the cereal without the milk, because even the harsh feeling of dry cereal scraping against my esophagus is still less painful than being forced to remember when I had to have two glasses of milk every day till I was 18 years old, which has now ruined things like milkshakes in my childhood, and now every time I'm offered a glass of milk, I just instinctively say, please, no more, daddy. So in conclusion, you know, you do need to have calcium daily, and milk can be a good source of that, but it's not the only way. Thanks so much for listening, class. I hope you learned something today. I've included all my sources in the description. And uh, let me know how many glasses of milk you had, or if you had a normal childhood, like a sicko.